All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome to the next episode of the Post Position Podcast presented by the Painted Lines. I'm Jack Connell, not not with Hot Take Harry today. He is out. Joining me today is the Four Seasons NBA Podcast hosts, Ryan Mogjosh and Zach Noble. You can find them both on Twitter at Zach Noble and at Ryan M A G D Z I A R Z. What's going on, guys? Very nice spelling. <laughs> well, well done. I haven't heard anybody ever not botch that. And missing hot take here today. That sounds like uh, a guy we should, we should have. <laughs> Especially if your Siakam takes on your last episode, I definitely oh, think he's. Geez. <laughs> let's go let's go what do you got <laughs> so um we'll just get right into some stuff uh, we see a lot is going on this week in the nba first thing i've got here is has been the incredible development of maverick star luka Doncic, who has been almost averaging a triple double putting up about 30 points per game is he an mvp candidate right now to you guys to me absolutely yes he is an MVP candidate. Uh, I can think of maybe two other guys, three maybe, that deserve an MVP over him right now, but it's super early. and A lot could still happen. Mm-hmm. So yeah. my thoughts here, I mean, of course he's a candidate. I mean, there's I always say there's five to ten candidates, uh, but is he a legit candidate yet? He, he's borderline. There's only two legit candidates right now, and that's Harden and Giannis. I mean, yes, AD and LeBron are right there as well, but – um, I think it's it's hard and Giannis from a stats perspective because LeBron and AD are going to take away from each other. But Luca, I mean, he's he's a second tier candidate because uh, I just don't think his wins are going to be at the level of the other guys. Mm-hmm. That's why I think I agree. I mean, his performance is there, but I don't think their success as a unit is good enough to relay in an MVP award. I mean, obviously Giannis and Harden; these are guys that are likely going to be top seeds in their conferences, top three or four seeds. So, I mean, that obviously benefits him a lot. I don't know if his team gets where he is. They, the supporting cast, Chris Tops, has not been looking too great in Dallas and the rest of the crew. It looks like almost a one-man show of Luka. I mean, what do you, how do you guys feel about the current state of the Dallas Mavericks? I love them. I can't get enough of their bench. I love their bench. Yeah, Chris Tapps has been kind of slower than what we thought he would initially be, but he just had his breakout game this past weekend. I think he had 20 and 15 boards. Finally looking like the Luka that we're, or the, the Chris Tapps that we're used to. And I, I just think that their bench is filled with a ton of guys that do one thing great. Like, you don't have a bunch of scores, You don't have a bunch of defensive guys. But they're specialists. They do one thing spectacular, mm-hmm. and they fit well with each other. I'm with Ryan. I, I think uh, this team, I've, I've talked about it a lot, that this supporting cast has really surprised me. I mean, it's not a team to get you an elite top four seed, but like it's good enough to get these guys to the playoff, in my estimation, which I didn't think they had beforehand. And, yes, they fit Luka really nicely. They're just not uh, that talented. I mean, that's why they're going to have to – get these type of players, but more talent in order for uh, the Mavericks to grow as a franchise. I think the one thing about Luka is he's only 20 years old. Do you think he's starting to see, I mean, even so young, that his ceiling of his game is starting to show at all? Or do you think the sky's the limit for Luka? How great do you think he's going to be? (laughs) The weird thing about Luka is that he is only 20. And I feel like, he can do what he's doing now forever. I don't know if, I mean, who knows how high the ceiling could get, but the length of his ceiling is, is what I'm going to Yeah, He can definitely put up these numbers for the next 10 years. If he, if his defense improves just effort wise, he can easily, I think be a top two, three player in the NBA for his entire career. I mean, I don't know how. Yeah. Josh, Josh Everly had a good one today best sophomore ever yeah I mean numbers wise off the start sure but like Tim Duncan won a title as the second best or best player of a team his second year and um Shaq Kareem a couple others that are still ahead of him and and they actually went deep into the run a couple won titles so yeah he's not going to be the best sophomore but I mean if if the team keeps winning if he makes the playoffs he's going to be top five right in that conversation um LeBron, I mean, he went 42 and 40, so he could be a better sophomore than LeBron. It's just, I don't think he has the defensive ceiling, but 
shoot, I mean, the way this NBA is going, is he going to need it? I mean, as long as he's got teammates to run with them and to score at the rate and um, just be ready to accept his crazy passes and capitalize off them, this guy could be, who knows? I think <laughs> I'm not either ready way, I think we all can agree the Mavericks, yeah. as long as they're able to keep Luke, are in very safe hands for the very long future of their franchise. So, I mean, another thing we kind of talked on a little bit, the MVP kind of seems to be a heavy two-man race, which it was last year between the same two people, James Harden and Giannis, both putting up ridiculous numbers on their teams. Who do you think is coming out as a better player so far between the two this season? This one's tough for me. If I had to choose one guy, I'd probably lean Harden just because what he's doing is so – bonkers like nobody's averaged 40 a game he's damn near doing that right now um Giannis did this last year and I I would say that he's improved even more than last year but Harden's step up from what he was doing last year I feel like is steeper than what Giannis is doing if that makes sense and the fact that Harden is about to average 40 points while adding Russ on their team with more team wins than Giannis has I just think right now I'd lean Harden Zach, what about you? Absolutely. Like, it, it's really close because Giannis is averaging 15 rebounds. He's approved four rebounds off this. His assists are up. He, he's up everywhere. And um, I'm on the side. I mean, Ryan was close, uh, borderline last year. But um, I thought Harden should have won it last year. And they both stepped it up again this year. I mean, right now, being the Rockets are in the, their records are basically the exact same, uh, ten and three and eleven and three. But uh, point differential goes to the Bucks, so they're winning games by a lot more. I just think the Bucks are a lot deeper team that fit around um, Giannis way better. Uh, but from a stats perspective, I mean, we're witnessing history once again, and he's doing it super efficiently. I don't care. If you say, oh, 44%, oh, 34% now um, are his two numbers, but it's literally, they're astronomical if you erase the first two games of the season where he went for like one for 18 from three. Like, he's been super, super efficient outside of those first two games, and it's it's so fun to watch, and it's just been another level. And like Ryan said, I mean, Westbrook hasn't changed his game a whole lot, and he's just gotten – new different scrubby role players that he's turning into guys that are coherent NBA players again. I think the one thing we, I just want to share Giannis' stats, if you don't know, um, he's went up from 27.7 points per game to 30.3, and his rebounds have gone up from 12.5 to 14, and his assists went up from 5.9 to 6.2. I think, I mean, he definitely has, his skill is a lot more well-rounded, but I just think what Harden's doing is just, so much better. He, he, what he's great at is NBA great level good right now. I mean, just for this, I would say all time, it's just like season wise, his numbers are, like you said, ridiculous. Nobody's really ever put up 40 points per game outside of like Will Chamberlain, really. And I, I mean, it's a very historic MVP race so far between two players. If these numbers stay up, in my opinion, it's both these guys could easily win MVPs in other years. It just sucks they're both in the same year. <laughs> that's what's going to make it super fun. And the one one thing to note that's like kind of concerning for me is Giannis's free throw attempts are up three, um, but uh, his percentage is down 11. He went from 73 down to 61, and he's I haven't seen anybody put up this many air balls in, in a while. Yeah, that's definitely something he needs to work on. Now, as we talk about powerhouses in the East, one team that's kind of shown up record-wise, I don't know, how you guys feel about them talent-wise, is the Boston Celtics. Do you feel the Celtics are for are legitimate even without Gordon Hayward? I do. I think Gordon Hayward was a big loss. I had him pegged preseason as my most improved player of the year, and he was balling before he got injured again. Uh, but the good thing about the Celtics is they're so deep at the wing position that they, guys, they have guys to fill that spot. Um, but yeah, the one big concern I have would had with them going into the season was post defense and rim protection. So far, Tice has been not bad, but Time Lord Robert Williams has been very good. Um, and I like the switch at point guard. They used to have a guy named Kyrie Irving, and now they have a more team oriented guy and play style with Kemba. So yeah, I like the fit that the Celtics have going on right now. Marcus Smart, Grant Williams, these guys are all 
filling in for a big right now. Is it going to last into the postseason? I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not necessarily sold on these six, seven, six, four guys playing center all the way through and them getting by with it. Uh, uh, I mean, I, they're definitely a second tier contender. I just, I'm not, I'm not ready to go there yet because of that that hole. Uh, I, I just need to see more of Robert Williams yet. Uh, it, Tice is a little too small for me to ever really be fully convinced on him. But Robert Williams can be the guy where. Um, Clint Capella type, if he can get close to being as productive as that. I know we're not going to see those numbers, but like the importance and kind of the anchor down there, that would that would be everything. I mean, coming out of that draft, I had Robert Williams, one of my favorite players coming out of that, and it really hurt to see him not going off to such a great start, but seeing him develop, I mean, it kind of hurts me as a Sixers fan rooting for a Celtic to, Celtic to succeed. But, I mean, the time, time has been great. Just the one thing I have against the Celtics has kind of been their schedule so far. They really haven't played great teams. They've played well in those games, but I don't know how that's going to transition as to when they play more powerhouses throughout the league. Hmm. Why has it been one of the easiest schedules? Uh, They've played a lot of teams. I'll pull up the schedule for them really quick, but they've played the Knicks twice, and throughout. let's just take a look here. They have started off with the Hornets, the Magic, the Cavaliers twice, and then oh no, that was preseason. We have the Knicks twice, the Cavaliers, the Hornets, Spurs, Maverick, Wizards, Warriors, oh, and Kings. And yeah, then I just Celtics. looked it up. Their strength of schedule is the fourth easiest in the league so far. So from the numbers, they're definitely going to have some. They have the Clippers, the Nuggets, the Nets twice, and the Nuggets within their next seven or so games. So they definitely will have more challenging matchups as they go throughout. So we'll see very shortly if they really are legitimate or not. So the next thing we're going to talk about here is something that's been unveiling throughout this this day yesterday has been the NBA city uniforms. So we've had a couple. We've had the Los Angeles Lakers, the Philadelphia 76ers, the Dallas Mavericks, Trailblazers, Houston Ross, Rockets, and the Boston Celtics. Do you guys have any favorites so far out of the group or any major hatreds out of the group so far? Yeah, I hate the Mavs. What are they doing? <laughs> those, those, those blue and green ones, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones that look like wannabe graffiti letters? <laughs> fresh, fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Those are bad. And I love the Mavs. That's about the only bad thing you can do in Dallas right now is have those jerseys on. I think the one by the – I think the one of these, they're not even that cool. I mean, at least they're using the old blue and bright green. I think that's a benefit to take. Yeah. From it. I, yeah, no, I like the blue and green, but just clean it up a bit. I don't, I don't like that font. I don't like how cartoony it looks. It looks fake. Uh, the one I don't like that much is the Lakers. I don't know. I just don't. What do they look like? They are yellow. So they're their yellow uniforms, but they have white Lakers and numbers. And then they've got white piping on the side with – it's a Shaq. It's their Shaq jersey, kind of like how they've done Kobe and Magic Johnson in the past. I this think they're pretty dope. It has MDE kind of written in the white for most dominant ever. I just – it looks – like Oh, wow. I haven't seen those. I like the lettering and the numbers. I think that's great. It's just the piping just looks out of place. And, like, they've got the Shaq Fu, like, stars, ninja blades on the sides. Yeah. And it's just – that. it just – Two styles that just look out of place together. That's my thing. I don't know. I like the Los Angeles look to it. On They showed the t-shirt. It looked great because it didn't have that stuff on. But throwing that onto it, I felt like I took it away from it a bit. I really like uh, Cream City Milwaukee's <laughs> that came out today. Can you see those? <laughs> I, I was just going to note those, but like, what does Cream City even mean? I don't know, but it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It just it keep coming back to that uh, Giannis uh, sexual uh, video with his girl girlfriend is unreal. Uh, <laughs> I mean another another cream jersey we saw was the Philadelphia 76ers. They kind of looked like their 2007 city uniforms, but instead they um it has the entire Philadelphia script and a more stylistic font, almost sort of like a mixed like a Declaration of Independence. Looks like what the font should have been for the throwbacks is kind of the best way to put it. It's kind of got a cursive look to it. I'm a big fan of it. Sixers fans 
don't like them that much. I don't know if you've. Why don't the Sixers do the old black I- Allen Iverson jerseys with yeah, those are Sixers on it? I my I think so. I think it's they are saving them from next year because next year is the 20th anniversary of the 2001 NBA oh. final appearance. So I think they're for That'd the 20 on, years. You might be on something there. Um, are these Blazers? Am I looking at the right one? Are the White Rip City? Is that legit? Yeah. I really like those. Yes, I'm all about those, good. but I keep thinking about Bill Walton and his afro and then uh, Jackie Moon. I I like them. I I I just feel like they ha- I mean this the Rip City's obviously a great design. It's just they're all great, but they all kind of blend into the same design in my head. It feels like, but they're all really good. It just feels like every single one is that bright red or white, but every single time I can't complain. They all look great. And then let me see here. We have the Boston Celtics, the old Celtic Irish design, with the, kind of like the weird green and yellow. I've never been wild about not, that. I don't like. I don't like when Boston tries to go gold or yellow. It's weird. Just get back like to the roots. The, I, I like. The, <laughs> I like the different font of them. The, I like the, the numbers look cool, but the colors. I'm not. I don't like. I don't the think I've so seen much. the font yet. I, I would have to see the font. I've only really seen the one that Ennis Cantor has kind of leaked all over the place. That the one that was on Instagram, Twitter, and everything. That's the only one I've really seen of it. They kind of had a better version of it posted online, but again, it was Ennis Cantor again. So I don't know how the other numbers look. Would I see it if I went to Ennis Cantor's Twitter right now? It's probably he took it down. But if you look up Celtic City, you'll see it everywhere. Celtic City Twitter, or just like Celtic City uniform anywhere. Oh, Celtic City uniforms. Those Motor City okay. ones are awful. Those soccer jersey looking need, thing. Oh yeah. FC Detroit. Uh, they need to. They need to go in a completely different route. Their uniforms. They need to rebrand completely. I agree. I just, they need to go back to the. They need to refranchise. Oh, I <laughs> see them. I see them. The font's not bad. It's like uh, it makes you think of like Massachusetts and like old school Boston. Like St. Yeah. Patrick's Day, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Very Irish theme to it. Yeah. Yes. And then the only other one I think I've I'm I'm, I'm missing on is the Houston Rockets NASA theme jerseys. Oh, I haven't seen those. They're kind of like I forget if they're. Let me find a picture. I believe they're either gray or they're white. Um, let's see here. They are. They're white. Mm-hmm. And it looks like the font is like black with silver trim, which is sick. I like that. Yeah. Um, what makes it NASA? It's just like the space theme, Houston, kind of that whole. I don't know if it's exactly NASA. That's just what first thing that went to my head. NASA. And then I'm looking. Through, I see, yeah, I see that now. The Bulls are teasing theirs. They're looking like they're going the baby blue version of their Chicago flag that they had the other year. Yep. That's that's looking like what they have going. And then the Indiana Pacers are a race car style, looks like again. <laughs> and the Cavaliers are something with blue. Oh, the Memphis Grizzlies. Yes. Absolutely first place. I can't <laughs> find them. The teal one. The Vancouver. Oh, really? The throw yeah, those are tough to beat. Oh, and then yeah, we those- have the Orlando Magic, kind of like the orange and black looking one. Yeah, I like those because they're like known for oranges. Yeah, I, I, it's a definitely a different look to it. It's kind of got like a neon. I like it. It's de- it's got a neon city look to it. I think those are great. I mean, I've so far, I mean, I feel like they've had a little Orlando kind of has good jersey. I don't like their what well, is their statements, the blue ones they have. I like their ones last year, but this year I'm not liking that much. I'm trying to see if we have are the any- Raptors. Are they the old school like purple stripe ones with the huge Raptor on them? But are they like green? They're, I've seen the ra- they've worn those. Their already. throwbacks are the white old '90s one. I don't know what their city is yet though. Okay, I'm looking at the wrong. I saw a green version of it and a red one. It was crazy. I think that's all the ones that we've had released so far. I mean, maybe. Who knows? Maybe by the time I finish this podcast, we'll be having some more. Say Minnesota is going to be releasing theirs tomorrow. A lot, I think, a lot you'll see be coming out within the next day or so. The um, 
Utah Jazz are going with their kind of tequila sunrise looking ones that they've had every year. They're going with those. They're saying one last year wearing those is this season. I they're up there with them too. I think they're one of the other great ones. They're definitely a more unique design. I think they're a lot less jazz and a lot more Utah kind of with the city ideal to them. I, I'm a big fan of those. All right, and I think that kind of wraps up the uniform. I think that's everything we've got here. The next big thing we have going on that's ha- going to have happened by the time this podcast is up and everything is the debut of Carmelo Anthony with the Portland Trailblazers. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! What are your guys' expectations for the Carmelo Anthony Trailblazers era? Ryan, is uh, Carmelo Anthony is Carmelo Anthony back yet? <laughs> He has a three right now already. Oh. It was beautiful. He just had a three. He made a three already. How many has he shot? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I just see one. But my expectations for Melo, I mean, it's, it's not much. Portland needs something to stay relevant. I thought it was a great idea. I'm happy to have Melo back in the league. I think the NBA is better for it. I, I don't know how effective he's going to be, but he'll get buckets. He's still a bucket getter. Yeah. I think the one thing that kind of hurts him a lot is his defense. Maybe if he, he'll put more effort in it, who, who knows? But, I mean, as he gets older, defense obviously will decline with any player unless you're an elite defensive talent. I mean, the scoring, if, if his scoring is great enough, it will hide for his defense. But they have hurt, they have obviously have lost a lot of wing depth this year. We kind of talked about that last week. And I think they're just a team that was in desperate need of a wing. And I feel he fits that great. And he He's great with Damian Lillard. I know they're very close. So I, I think it was a great fit. I look at it this way. I think he can be about as valuable as Ennis Cantor was last year. and uh, Similar defensive role. I think he should guard similar type of guys as long as they don't have him guarding threes and switching everything. And um, they just need to put him on fours and fives, the right people. I mean, in the right situation. I mean, not a lot of fives. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think uh, he can be a spark plug. I mean, they're – we didn't like who they replaced him with. I don't know too many people who did. Like, look at their roster from head to toe. I mean, Rodney Hood, Zach Collins wasn't playing great, Kent Bazemore, Zonia, Scal, Nasir Little, Anthony Tolliver. Like, these guys aren't proven guys. These guys aren't consistent players. He can definitely earn playing time, and they had nothing to lose because they're, I mean, they're in trouble right now. I mean, it's hard to get this far back in a loaded West. And uh, if if Melo can't help, give him a spark plug. I mean, they they need to blow this thing up somehow. I mean, so I'm looking so far through four minutes. He has three points, one rebound, one block on one of two shooting. Obviously, an incredible huge sample size. But so far, I think he can definitely, like you said, be an Ennis Cantor type player and contribute greatly to this team as they make a push. I think as they get healthier and they get more experience, I we'll talk about this more. I definitely think they'll be in the playoffs, just depending on what seeding. They're only a four-game win streak away from being right back in the mix of things. It's very early into the season. A lot of things can change, for better or for worse. Well, obviously, if they don't stay healthy, I think there will be a lot of issues. Absolutely, yeah. They can't get much – Below, much more below 500 than this. I mean, I'm not ruling these guys out at all. I mean, when you have this much talent in two players, as Damon CJ and Nurk is on the outside looking in, I mean, it's they got to get rolling. I mean, sooner than later because, I mean, the West, this isn't the East. I mean, definitely not the East. Right, another thing we kind of we talked about, Ennis Cantor, is free agency. So who have so far have been your guys – best value free agent signings this summer. I'll kind of say like under or about $20 million or less per free agent. What would you guys say are kind of the best players so far? I'll say my one. I wrote down two, but I have one who I think is the most valuable free agent signing. That's Aaron Baines so far. Uh, It kind of came out of nowhere. Aiton was unexpectedly banned for making his pee clean. And Bain steps up and literally changes the entire Phoenix Suns team. Him and Rubio have transformed. They've really had never had a real point guard on their squad, and they've really never had a real rim protector or defensive presence down there. And now all of a sudden they have both. 
and Aaron Baines stepped up and is ready to go. Yeah, I, he definitely has been down. As been a Sixers fan, I've always hated Aaron Baines. He has just always, for some reason, been an Embiid killer in the playoffs. And I mean, now he's in Phoenix. I can kind of root for him a little bit when we're not playing Phoenix. But he definitely has changed the culture. I think Ricky Rubio has changed Phoenix completely. We've always, I think people have always said, they just need a point guard. And now they got that. I feel like you started to see, like you said, the culture is starting to change a little bit. And they're finally starting to find their town a little bit. I mean, it sucks they kind of hurt on some draft picks like Dragon Bender or Josh Jackson, but they struck on Devin Booker. And I think that's kind of the main piece that matters. <coughs> So I got I got a few. I mean, Baines has probably been the most impactful, to be honest, on a winning winning team. Um, I mean, if you want to count Malcolm Brogdon, he'd be right there with him, if not a little more impactful. But Malcolm goes above twenty after this year. He's only had twenty this year. Um, so then, um, outside of that, on a winning team, you got Boyan Bogdanovich has been a huge addition in Utah. And then on losing teams, three main guys that. Stick out Jabari Parker, Derek Rose, and I, Isaiah Thomas are all having great years. My two that I have here that I had Brogdon kind of on the cusp, but you said like he's going to be above that. I have Danny Green. I mean, while he's a little bit, he's decently paid, but I mean, he's just he's paid to do exactly what he's supposed to do, and I feel like he fits great as a sub piece for the Lakers, kind of a some a step below the AD and LeBron to help out. He's been a great shooting. I feel like he's been pretty solid so far. I'm, he's definitely mm. my one. Then my other one is Rashawn Holmes for the Sacramento Kings. He has been so good with underneath the basket. I feel like he's not really talking about that much because they've really been lackluster this year. Obviously losing Marvin Bagley has allowed uh, Rashawn Holmes to see more time on the court. He's taken every advantage of it that he can. I feel like he's definitely – has been worth every single dollar of his contract so far. Do you think Rashawn can be the starter of the future there? I think him and Bagley are a pretty good pairing. I I, I see Rashawn Holmes almost being like a Montrezl Harrell, I mean, if given the opportunity. Oh, I could definitely see that. I mean, he's just a very – I mean, I know him from his time in Philadelphia. He's just a definitely aggressive, explosive underneath the basket. He doesn't shy away from anything. He's definitely going to make an impact. I, if he keeps his up, yeah, I could definitely see him being at the five and then Bagley being at the four, without a doubt. Um, does Kendrick Nunn count? He was he wasn't drafted. I guess you could say, that. yeah, he's, he's undrafted. Kidding. Technically, uh, that's a good picked one. up. Yeah, yeah it, it, he's gonna be the rookie of the year. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, you really, you got him over Ja? No, but he's playing really well. <laughs> yeah, he's right there. All right. Um. Yeah. I mean, this is Kendrick Nunn's. I feel like he's slowed down a little bit, but I mean, he's definitely been great to start off the year. He was absolutely dominant. His numbers. I mean, in college, he was the second highest scorer behind Trey Young in 2017, and he shot the most three pointers in college that year. He is definitely just. A, he was great to start off the year. He's slowing down a little bit, but I mean, still, he's a rookie. He's definitely has a lot of time to grow. I think he's definitely has been in that Jimmy Butler culture that has been adopted in Miami. They've been very great Tyler Harrow and company here we have some fan mailbox questions we can get into a little bit our first one we have here is say that the Lakers the Rockets the Nuggets Jazz Clippers are your locks for one through five no specific order who would you say are your six through eight say those teams one more time slow so I know who to eliminate Lakers Rockets Mm -hmm. Nuggets Jazz and Clippers. Nugs, Jazz, Clips. Um, Dallas. I had Dallas at eight before the season started, and now I want to put them even higher. How high? Yeah, they're okay. definitely someone that went up there. I mean, I give... oh, <laughs> I'll give you six. That's pretty spicy. That's my. I that's pretty high. Yeah, pretty fair. That's pretty high. Yeah. Um, and then who else is in the West? I had, I'll, I'll, I'll say my, will you say our 60, the Star City, the Mavericks? I've got the Trailblazers at six. I don't. I'm so out on the Trailblazers. I think they could definitely find their stride and they'll definitely get back into it as the year goes on without a doubt. I mean, they're definitely competitive as they, what time, what is the expected return of Yusmerkic? Probably like what, after the all-star break at the earliest? 
Yeah, he's his leg snapped, so it could be a long yeah, I time. Say, I mean, like maybe not even see him this year. Who knows? Got it right here. But, you know, who knows? Maybe Carmelo put up 25 a game. Expected, yeah, February 1, right promising. before the All-Star break. But who knows? Okay. Who knows? That could so, change I like mean, no definitely. Way. Yeah. I mean, if, that, if he returns around that time, I definitely think they can definitely make a late push. They were a three seed with him last year, obviously a lot different bench landscape than they had, but with those stars, they can at least almost replicate what they had there. I think they'll definitely be, able to be a bottom seed in the East or the West. Who's your six seed, Zach? That's so tough. The six, I mean, I got my three teams, um, but I'm, I'm going to say... I'm going to go Portland as well at the six. I'm going to go Portland. Wow. I mean, it's just, uh, I think uh, Portland at the six. I'm going to go Dallas at the seven and Minnesota at the eight. I My seven and eight, I have the Phoenix Suns and the Dallas Mavericks as my seven and eight. I would love if the Suns made the playoffs. I don't see it happening, but I would love it. But I think every single game, like, all right, they're going to cool off. They're going to stop being this good. And then they keep doing it. Who's to say they aren't going to keep doing it throughout the year? I mean, and you're going to get, who knows? I mean, maybe Aiden will change how they look for better or for worse. I don't see how much worse will affect them. But, I mean, it definitely will, I think, will benefit having him back in the team in some way, shape, or form. And they, I, I don't see why they can't be a low seed playoff team with how they're playing. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sold in this Baines-Rubio magic's going to last that long. That would be a monumental jump. Um, yeah, it's I'm not I'm not there yet, but I mean I, I definitely I mean I'm not saying it's out of the question. I definitely think they have a chance, but I just think I don't think the Blazers are that far enough out. Whereas the Spurs aren't that far enough out. I just think the Blazers and Spurs. I think one of them are for sure going to blow it up. I'm leaning towards the Spurs. Um, I think they both should blow it up, but. Um, I'm going to give the Blazers a little more. I mean, and then, like we said, I mean, we kind of talked about Dallas a little bit. We we talked about Luka and his crew. They can definitely, I think, will sneak their way in the playoffs one way or another. I wouldn't be surprised if they're six or eight or even, who knows, higher or lower. But I definitely think they'll be in the playoffs. So our next question we got here is from Simon Rath. He says, (laughs) how many MVPs will Trey Young win in his career? 10 or 12? Simo. <laughs> <laughs> not 10, not 12. Um, I think he could be in the running for some MVPs in his career. Are, are for you sure. willing, to, willing to say you think he's going to win one? No. Yeah, I'm not willing to go there yet either. Uh, I, think, I think he'll finish in the top five um, three times throughout his career. Um, I mean, I'll put that number on it, but I'm not willing to go he's going to win one. My boss, Brian Jacobs, at the Pain Lines, he said before the year, he said Trey Young was going to be a top five MVP candidate. I mean, well, before he got hurt, he was definitely, I, th- I won't, he was definitely one of the best players in the league with what he was doing. He was dominating everything. Like he's still being, very, he's still incredibly good. I I definitely think as he gets older, you're going to see, I don't, can't, I can't say he's going to win one for sure, but I think like you guys said, he'll definitely be in the running for some, without a doubt. He is the future of the Atlanta Hawks. Um, yeah, hard to disagree with I, that is That was our very short mailbox we have. Uh, I think that's all we got for today. Again, you can follow them on Twitter at Zach Noble and at Ryan M-A-G-D-Z-I-A-R-Z. They are the hosts of the Four Seasons NBA podcast presented by Ball is Life. This is Post Position presented by The Pain and Lines. Thank you again, guys. Thanks, Jack. Thanks a lot, man. Have a good one.